Good evening, friends. It's Alexor again with another build. This time on fire again, I guess. But it is a Necromancer. It's been a while since we played a Necromancer. As you can tell, we have a, an army behind us of great lads. And what we do is we shoot a lot of fire arrows. Look at it. A lot of fire shit is coming the opponent's way. Yeah, I was I was skilling something differently on the Walter Zombie. That's, I didn't even cast it yet. There it is. They actually vomit fire onto the enemies. <laughs> this is an empowered one of hundred corruption. Um, this can do up to. I did tier four Jura actually quite well, but then I died because the minions do die fast to Jura. Ow. So, this is not a super high corruption build, but it's a fun build because you have basically an army of army of arrows flying at the enemy. Some of them died now, but that's you gotta get used to it because they will be dying all the time. That is fine. You basically have your big guy, your tank, and then you have your other guys which are shooting all the arrows all the time and the mages. So if you want to have a fire explosive minion build, this one is it. And it's using this one weapon, Dragon Flame Edict. You have to have this one, otherwise it doesn't really make sense because it gives minion fire damage and fire resistance and ignite a minion hit, so this is really what you need. But let's first get over the skills. Very simple, we have Skelly Mage first. Uh, it's very simple, you go down to the Pyromancer, obviously you want to have them do shoot fire balls. Then you have to have Inferno, you can see. Inferno over here, because that removes any other mage. If you don't have this, and you cast Skelly Mage, sometimes another mage pops up. You don't want that, obviously. Then you go into extra projectiles. You gotta max this one out. Attack speed, cast speed, maxed. Then you want to go with this as well. Because this is your evasive traversal skill, right? This means you can teleport with the Skelly Mage. Like if I click here, it creates a Skelly Mage and it teleports me over there. So you want to have this. And then Health Leech and Health. That's pretty much Skelly Mage, very simply. Don't go for the Arc Mage. You want to have more, maximum of four at this point, we can have. Bone Golem, as always, is very simple. Bone Golem is pretty much always the same. The Bone Golem does have the Pyre Golem. I did not go for it because it doesn't really do much. Because the main goal of the golem is tank. Right? We want to be tanky with the golem. It doesn't do much damage anyway. It doesn't matter. So what you go for is health and armor. Make him big because that generates a threat. Meaning the enemies attack him first other than you. This one, additional armor to nearby minions, including itself. 400 armor for the minions. Great. Melee attack speed, movement speed. And movement speed to other minions. And down here. Restores health to you and itself. Health to us doesn't do that much because we are low life build. Ah, sorry. Uh, gives you health and gives him health. Very, very nice. Also very simple. Now let's... Summon Skeleton. Um, very simple. You gotta go over here first. So you remove the warriors entirely from this thing. Then you're gonna have more Skeletons. And then you also wanna have... Where is it? <coughs> oh yeah, over here. You all just get the fire arrow, right? This is what, you, what you're doing. And you can shoot more arrows. So these, this is what does the damage. And you have to remove the warriors. So you always cast the archers. You have an army of archers. And you have more here. Do more damage, another one added, and health leech and physical res. Very simple, right? They just do damage with their fire arrows. Nothing crazy. Really. All the zombies even maxed out, I just realized that. What you want to have is the fire zombies, and you want to have the, the vomit, repulsive vomit, great name. Because of this, the vomit shreds armor, because they're going to run towards the enemy, they vomit fire at them, it shreds the armor and then they explode. It's great, great, great stuff. And uh, yeah, they do damage to them. You want to have this as well. So you cast five zombies at the same time, but uh, it has a longer cooldown. Doesn't matter, you just want to have all of them at the same time. Otherwise, you have to cast all the time. That's annoying. More damage and this thing, this thing is key. Kill threshold. If the boss gets low, send the zombies towards him. 
The explosion below 16% health kills him immediately. Then we have the rafts. Very simple. We gotta go over to the flame raft. You have the chance to cast a flame raft instead. He shoots fireballs. So another ranged attack. So really only the tank of Golem is at the front lines. Everyone else is shooting from behind. Then you go into crit over here. Or crit damage on these. So they, they crit more. Very simple. They have more health. And over here, um, yeah, the, the health no longer decays. That's important, otherwise they die all the time. But you're limited to two refs. Doesn't matter. You don't only need two. But they don't die. Very simple. Basically, what you do with all of them, you convert them to fire. You give them more health and more damage. That's what you do with your minions. Nothing crazy. Passives. Now, usually people go all in on this. Because the minion attacks be cast, but you got to have this. And mostly in this, I also went a little bit into ward retention. You don't necessarily need that, okay? Because we're not a low life build, we're actually a high life build. You don't need that. But it's cool because you gain ward sometimes from potions and stuff. Then it's it's helpful. Also, necrotic resistance, poison resistance, but it's a little bit a gimmicky um, thing. I'm probably going to remove it on the actual build planner. You can check it out yourself. You just put more in this and... Um, yeah, armor per character level is also very helpful for the minions. You don't need this. You can just ignore that. I just wanted to tell you anyway why I did it. Necromancer. Simple. Minion health, armor, damage reflected. Minion damage, attack speed, cast speed. Simple. I mean, this is pretty much always the same for the Necromancer. Shred armor. Minion cast speed. Attack speed. Minion fire damage. Minion bow damage. Increased health for me. This is just for us, so we're a little bit tankier. Minion health is fine. One more uh, skeleton. We want to have this. Just put one point in this. That's enough. This one is key. Minion fire damage and necrotic damage. Elemental damage. Necrotic damage. Crit multi. And another skeleton mage. You also want to have this and this I had already. Yeah. Wall retention. Very simple. You just go for the damage. You max this one out as well. Uh, if you can. Very simple. We put a little bit into the Warlock for a simple reason. That is all increased damage over time and health. We want to be a little bit tankier. But damage over time is great because we ignite people all the time with our fire, right? So this is a great buff um, for our, um, our damage. The Lich, very simple. Just 10 points into this. You always, you kind of always have these 10 points. Uh, intelligence and mana region is just so nice. Just a nice base addition. Um, you could also throw more into this, for example. Um, or more into this, so your tank here. Or intelligence and resistances. But I think the intelligence and the dot, just in my testing, it just worked better. So that's why I went with it. Very simple. Now, for the items, I already mentioned this one. You definitely need the Dragon Flame Edict. Very simple. Spell damage plus one to elemental skills. That's great because these are all elemental skills then, right? Ignite on minion hit. Minion fire damage. Fire resistance damage reflected. And 6% chance for the nearest minion to target the location. To target the location to cast Dragonflame Nova when you use a minion skill. That's irrelevant. But the, the minion fire damage is really the key thing we want from this. Then the, another unique, these ones you don't necessarily need, but the great thing about these is the hollow fingers plus one maximum skeleton. So you can have one or actually two more skeletons, which brings it up to nine. We're sitting at nine skeletons. So running two of these rings, rings is actually very powerful and helpful. If you don't have them, just go with minion damage. You always go with minion damage. You can, you can see minion damage. This also has minion damage, minion health, plus two to skeleton mage. If you have this or something with the affix of plus two or up to plus four on summon skills of mage, you want to have that. It's great. Um, health, fire damage, minion damage, health. This one is insane, actually. Also, volatile zombies summoned on potion use and minion damage. So that's just a lot of fucking minion damage. That's great for all zombies. Minion health, minion crit chance implicit, right? You can tell. Uh, physical penetration for bleed, that's fine. Health, poison, resistance. Simple. Minion fire damage. Fire damage. Int, health region, health. Classic. 
Minion damage. You can tell where this is going. It's always the same. You just go for minion damage on all your items. These are very simple. Now again, this you don't necessarily need. I kind of like it because it has so many resistances and gives me good uh, movement speed. That's why I went with it. Um, but you can just run with any boots that also have minion damage, for example, or minion fire damage or resistances, minion health, whatever. Or you look at your resistances, right? If you hit C, we have pretty much everything maxed out almost. I mean, fire isn't, but void is almost maxed. Everything else is even over capped. Um, I could look into endurance more because we're only sitting at 35%. That's a bit bad. Um, I might change this in the build plan to, so you actually just have, have this maxed. But this is the items I currently have. You have to play the items you have, right? Very simple. So really, the only thing you need is this unique. That's also why this is a budget build. Um, these you don't need, but they are a cool addition. Also because the implicit, I forgot to mention this, a crit multi, minion health, minion damage. So these are just great. And I think they're not that rare. You, you should have these, I think. Yeah, very simple. Um, and also not crazy. For the idols, same thing as always. Health, 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 health. Crit chance, cool. Minion crit, nice. But this one. You, you should have at least... You kind of need two of them, right? 42% chance for Summon Wrath to Summon the Flame Wrath instead. Because just from the passive tree, the Summon Flame Wrath isn't that high. It's 22%. That's not very good. So in most cases, you will not cast the Flame Wrath. With two of these, 42% chance and 54, you're pretty much guaranteed to always have a Flame Wrath. Right, when you, when you cast them, it's always a Flame Wrath. See? Um, so, because you want to have those. If you have the regular one, he dies immediately anyway, and he does necrotic damage, that's pointless. We gotta have the fire damage. So this is why I need these two. One, if it, like if you have one that goes to, is this a high roll? Almost. It, if you have one of them that is at like 50%, you can go with one, if you don't have the other one. And just be lucky in your casts. But if there is a heat going on and there's lots of shit happening, and you have to look at the wrath that is currently being summoned, that kind of sucks. So you don't want to do this, alright? Very simple. Yeah, that's it about the build on a base level. As I said, it's very simple. You just run at the enemies, you cast your Volta Zombies. That's the only thing you do, is casting Volta Zombies. Because you can't do anything else. Most of the times you look at... The top left bar, how many minions you have, which one are dead. Again, you have four mages, you have nine skeleton warriors, and you have two refs. And of course, the zombies. Outside of that, you just dodge damage, as I did here. Just run out of damage all the time. If I actually eat the potion, then I cast zombies. Also, funnily enough, now we have... I can't have more than six. Right, I forgot. And I get involved from it, so that's pretty neat. So you just look at the top left, how many you actually have all the time. So this can easily do most casual player endgame content. As I said, it does start to struggle at like 200 corruption a little bit because your minions just die very fast. At this point, you can look into more minion health and dodge rating and resistances on your items over damage. Or sort of make a mixture out of it. Um, but this is not a, a build that can go really high in corruption. I don't think so. But it doesn't matter. You can you can go to 200 corruption. I think you'll find you might struggle against the Emperor of Corpses at that level because they just die fast. You're busy recasting them all the time. You don't have the mana to cast them all at the same time. So yeah, but anything up to empowered and I would say 150 corruption. As, as I said, I tested at 200 worked just fine, but um, I didn't test the boss. So, 150 corruption is should be totally doable with this build. Let me know in the comments what you think of it. Uh, if you would change anything, if you like it, if you hate it, let me know. Um, again, I try to make more budget builds that don't use 15 unique. So, this is only free, really. So, I hope you like that. And I will see you in the next video.